Welcome back. Uh, time for us to get into our social hour. This time we focus on religious matters ish in as far as money, uh, wealth, fame, and churches or leaders for that matter. What are your thoughts? Let's go to the wall. And of course, you've got two guests, um, uh, Reverend Kibuga. Kibuga. It's good to see you back, Pastor Kibuga. And of course, uh, new guest, uh, Pastor Mark, good to see you as well. Uh, Anthony <coughs> David Luis Wangila says, It's not the church, just few thugs defiling the name of the church. Kenyans should read the Bible to read out these mercenaries. Okay. John Murugi. Actually, it has become... Hey, John. And the class in ESC spelling. Wow. Daniel Agui. The church died in the 80s. Dale Ngugi. These days, they're after money, not the word. Okay. Essie. Sowing seed is biblical, but yeah. Some self-proclaimed pastors are using it for their own motive. Remember, there is no photocopy with... Out the original. <laughs> I don't know what that means in, to the, as far as this topic. Carlos Mopes, it is prosperity gospel. Plant a seed and give tithe. Okay. Francis, not all churches are misbehaving because of money. Example, the Catholic Church and many other mainstream churches are doing a good job. Okay. Osborne, the New Testament does not dwell on tithing because it is based on Mosaic law, which is Jewish. Really? Okay. Solomon, prosperity gospel thrives in Africa largely due to its ever-increasing gap between the rich and the poor. Solomon, Africa's largely popular, a poor and desperate people, deprived of any economic freedom, seek prosperity gospel as their last resort. Pastor, is this true? And lastly, James Jockey, I think the gospel has been too materialized. No one pers person thinks the right of a church set up without making chapa. Christian Remy. All right, this is our topic for the social hour this morning. Uh, and, of course, we're talking about the gospel of plant a seed. And, of course, you shall have something in return. And we are asking, has the church lost its moral ground? The people who are going to lead us in this conversation this morning is uh, Pastor Mark Kolo and, of course, Pastor Eric Kibuga. Usual suspect, of course, Remy Majala, who will be telling you how to go to participate in this conversation. My name is Jan. Good to see you today. Um, the suspect is in the building, yes. And uh, you can also uh, get in touch with us on our SMS line, 2001. You can tweet us at K24TV, at Jimmy Gadu, at Resian, with the double L's, with the double S, that is, uh, at myself, at Ravi Majala, and of course, our producer, at Chegeti. Um, tell us what you think. Yes. Pastor Eric and Pastor Mark, give and you shall receive. Are the people who are supposed to be God's representation on earth misusing this? Well, um, once again, thank you for this uh, opportunity. I think um, going um, with what some of the you know, audience had to say about it, uh, you'll find that what's, what's happening is um, certain things are being taken from Scripture, which is true. That's a valid Scripture in the Bible. But then, of course, um, there have been excesses. But then again, uh, that doesn't mean we throw away the baby and the dirty water. So yes, that is a legitimate scripture in the Bible. But yes, there have been some abuses, mm -hmm. but not wholesomely, just in part. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I know there is an association that uh, is an umbrella body for all the churches in Kenya. Probably with the rising cases of uh, fake healing and selling of anointing oil, have they probably convened and decided a way forward? Because you see, it spoils the face of everybody in it, whether those who are doing, who mean well, and those who don't mean well equally. Pastor Mark. Um, like um, Pastor Eric has said, there's a lot of abuse in the body of Christ because um, in everything that uh, is genuine, you will always find a counterfeit. I don't know if there has been every, any major move to bring the body of Christ together by the umbrella uh, bodies or networks or associations that uh, unite churches. But essentially, I think um, there is need for um, a continuous declaration of what is true to counter what is false. Mm. Sometimes darkness thrives simply because light isn't shining where it should. And, so, um I like what you said, light isn't shining where it should. Now, this light has been highlighted in the media in so many negative ways. Mm -hmm. um, people, pastors rather, are using the needs and the desperation of people to make this thing look like a business. We've seen it around. Mm -hmm. uh, people laying hands uh, who have no power whatsoever, mm -hmm. you know, on people. So 
why is it so easy that uh, anyone, if I want to become a pastor right now, I can be and just go use my prowess, quote unquote, to lie to anyone I can for my own benefit? Why is the church turning into a business? Why are people's emotions turned into just an array of ridiculous comic comedy? Because that's what it's looking at, mm. like, like right now. I think that's, that's an excellent question because it brings us to what the fundamental issue is. The, the whole issue of uh, why pastors are going into the, let me call it uh, business, of making money through many of these um, things that we've seen on TV, again, which I insist are not, are not wholesomely uh, an accurate reflection of every church in Kenya, but then in part. But one of the reasons why that has been so is because I believe largely of a failure to understand what the role of the church is in society. Because when you look at it, that's how you end up having people who don't even have the necessary qualification, people who are into uh, church work uh, simply for what they can make out of it. They haven't understood what their mandate is, what their role is. Some of them actually shouldn't even be there. And as Rosian asked, she asked about the bodies mm -hmm. who are mandated to to actually overlook these issues. Now, that means the body isn't doing everything they could because they would be identifying these so-called pastors who come in this so many in sheep clothes, mm -hmm. rather, or uh, you know, who come disguised as people who mean well. Because, like I said, if I want to become a pastor right now, I can be and say maybe I'm from the states, and uh, you know, I put on a very awesome accent mm -hmm. and I tell people, "Come here, let me lay hands on you. Mm -hmm. uh, you were sick. I, I can see your mother has this issue of cancer. Let me pray for you." So, why is it that you know the body isn't strong enough for them to actually see these perpetrators who are not really real? If, 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 if you'd allow me to comment on it, sure, you see ahead. even the whole issue of the bodies that are mm. there to sort of like create checks and balances uh, in many ways can be very contentious, mm -hmm. in many ways, in the sense that already in Kenya we have the freedom of worship. And so you have, uh, church has, I mean, taken so many faces. And so you, same way you'd have many denominations, there are many expressions of faith. I mean, you recall just like um, recently with the Westgate attacks, and uh, it, it would almost appear as if that was Islam. But you remember again, um, Islamic <coughs> society coming up and saying, that does not represent us. They also have many different faces, of course, with the extremists or fundamentalists. But they were all streams from one particular faith. So the same way, even within Christian faith, you find with that um, uh, the regulatory body, Sometimes there are challenges because uh, how do you gauge uh, a denomination that may not necessarily be inclined to, you know, maybe what the predominant uh, face of church in Kenya has been. However, um, that would in itself call for other reforms that are needed. But then um, basically, if the church were to understand its mandate, and then of course um, with the proper systems put in place, we would have uh, fewer, if, if, if at all, I'm, I don't know whether it would be possible to have mm -hmm. none, but would have fewer fake preachers, uh, you know, just people seeking for money, would have fewer of that. Mm -hmm. Yes. May I also contribute uh, uh, in that regard? The, I understand the place for leadership and the role of pastors in shepherding the people and um, teaching and preaching. But um, also the responsibility lies with every individual who is in the church. One of the things that often is not highlighted is the fact that we have a lot of um, people in the church who have not taken responsibility for their personal work with God. Uh, I'll give you a practical example. If somebody comes up and is teaching me something that is not biblical, the Bible is no longer a secret book can be found everywhere in every country on earth. It's my responsibility because I take my salvation and my personal work with God seriously to find out is this in the book or not. But we have whole churches, entire groups of people who gather mm -hmm. who don't know what's written in the book. And so when somebody shows up there with gimmicks, we have a lot of charlatans. Mm -hmm quite agreed, mm -hmm. but it's my responsibility to find the truth for myself. But where you find a lot of, uh, let me use the term, lazy saints who are not willing to find the truth mm -hmm. for themselves, 
it's easy to be deceived but, by anybody. But then, Pastor Mark, a lot of times these people do not quote something that is without the Bible. They just quote it within the Bible but misinterpret it. Yes, you can you can read the Bible in so many ways. So they will so go counter check and they will still find what was said. You can read the Bible in so many ways. Mm -hmm. Beyond what is written, there is a spirit that mm -hmm. helps us to understand what is written. Mm -hmm. So it's not my pastor's responsibility primarily, primarily to um, help me understand the scriptures. Every born again believer has the Holy Spirit. The pastor's role is to teach and to bring some level of understanding, yes, but I have access to God who is my primary teacher. But where I don't cultivate my relationship with the Holy Spirit, where I don't spend time in the Word for myself, even if somebody comes quoting from Scripture with verses, with references, um, anybody can twist any material. Mm -hmm. Anybody can. You can read it a thousand ways, but it's my responsibility to find out what is the truth. Mm -hmm. With the spirit of inquiry, mm -hmm. I believe every believer so can So let me know. understand yes. this. Um, Eric, I'm going to say something. Yes. Of course yes. you will. Um, in regard to what Mark has said. Mm -hmm. But my question is this. Does that mean the desperation of people who have... Uh, maybe a lot of issues uh, may not really want to read the Bible for themselves because they think they can't. Why is it that it's quicker for me to, as, even, despite the fact that I may know that there are many liars out there, I may still want to just quickly suck in and accept the gospel without really counter checking exactly what this person is saying. So, why are victims coming in every day, even after? I'm sure the things you've seen on TV, someone else will come and say, you know, I, I was, you know, bribed over 20,000 shillings and you'd actually expect them to know that, you know, you saw this on TV, why yes, would you still? Yes. So what is the main core that people are missing out exactly? All right. Um, I would have wanted to respond to something uh, Reverend Mark said. Go ahead, you can um, still do that. Maybe let, let me just touch on it first. Mm -hmm. Of course, there is a direct <coughs> relationship between uh, the pastors, the role of the pastors and the role of the members. And like he said, of course, the, the, the pastors, uh, part of their primary role is to equip, you know, the born-again members, the members who come to church, so that they themselves are able to tell what is true from what is false. And so, of course, that's a large part of their responsibility, mm -hmm. um, which, of course, informs uh, the different forums and why people meet, why people gather. Having said that, uh, of course, you must understand that people are desperate. Yeah. And they'll keep falling for the same thing over and over because uh, desperate people will do desperate things. Um, we are seeing, I mean, someone mentioned about um, the disparity between the rich and the poor um, with, I mean, uh, rates of inflation, VAT and everything, jobs, availability. So people are getting desperate. And of course, uh, like he said, uh, they, they are looking for the short way out, the mm -hmm. easiest way. And of course, which again... Um, to me, addresses, I'm always looking at what's the cause behind the cause. And why, why, why would people become so gullible that they can fall for what is not even, I mean, it's not even common sense. Mm. I mean, why, even if I was not born again, why would I fall for something like that? Yeah. You know, why would I have to, you know, pay you for something? And yet, even just from my own understanding from Sunday school, I can be able to tell a few things in scripture. So for me, when I look at it again, it addresses a fundamental issue of why are pastors then behaving that way? Why? And, and then again, some of them, not all of them. At least I believe I'm not, I believe that you are not. <laughs> so why is it that they're behaving that way? It takes me back again to training. Mm. They haven't gotten trained to understand what their job is. So they too, maybe, maybe for some, it could be someone who wasn't doing well in life. And so they went, took a collar or something, um, got the accent, as you say, <laughs> and just <laughs> learnt a few things, how to motivate people. And um, I mean, um, that's what they end up doing and gather a following and so forth and so on. And so it takes us back to uh, pastors will require proper training, will require equipping for their role, and the same is passed down to their members. L let me ask this question. It sounds like a rather obvious question, but are pastors or, say, priests, called or is it a career path you choose for yourself is it a vocation according to you um it's not a choice you make by yourself it's a calling it's a divine calling so even those fake ones have been called not necessarily mm -hmm. not everyone who calls himself a pastor or a priest or an evangelist is actually called by god you can call yourself anything mm -hmm. 
Um, the fact that uh, you eat at Galitos doesn't make you a hamburger. So the fact that I wear a pastor's collar doesn't make me a pastor. Mm -hmm. When God calls you, it's authentic. How and do you know it's God calling you? First of all, you, you have to have a walk with God, a personal relationship with God. Mm -hmm. If I'm married to my wife, as I am married to my wife, I, I recognize her voice. Whether she's speaking on the phone or if she's speaking in another room, I know her voice because I have a relationship with her. Anyone who has a living relationship with Jesus Christ should be able to tell the voice of God. Uh, when God calls you, um, God equips. God shows you your calling, gives you your assignment, and helps you understand what exactly He's calling you to do part time. Mm -hmm. And as we grow in that, in obedience, we see God actually working through men to fulfill His purpose on earth. So it's not everybody who calls himself or herself a pastor or a bishop or a reverend is actually called of God. But quite a lot of people, a lot of people are called by God genuinely and mm -hmm. doing the work of God genuinely. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Now, I hope, Rosiane, before you um, ask, of course, um, the, of this question, you've heard it before. Lazima mtu apande mbengu ndo aone uzima wa mungu. You know what I'm saying? In the sense that, you know, you always hear this thing, panda mbengu, panda, you know, as in just, you know, keep on sewing, the ministry sewing, and the others are actually very sincere about it. But, you know, others, you know, Mpaka, sometimes you ask yourself, seriously, this roll call is just a bit too you know, suspect, like there's something not right about, you know, about this thing. Mm -hmm. And then also the aspect of where you have uh, pastors who live so large, you wonder what they're driven by. As in, you know, the whole, the way they preach is lovely, you're moved by them, but the way they live is ridiculous. In the accent where someone may have, you know, come to church and they only have 10 shillings and, you know, you may be asking for more money, so sojourn to my wall, you know, and people are wondering, really, as in, are you thinking about us or are you driven by your own selfish ambition? What exactly happens there? Wh where does a pastor reach until he feels that he needs to be this person, yeah, you keep on sewing into my ministry, and you and then when you're looking at you, Manze, you have like 50 cars, you have like a security entourage, it's it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, well, when I when, when I look at it, of course, um, there's uh, Reverend Mark said there's how you can take uh, a scripture, and of course, everyone has access to the Bible, so there's how you can take a scripture and go with it where you want to go with it. So, for example, you'll take the scripture on. Um, <laughs> Um, give and it shall be given back to you. Uh, or plant uh, a, 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 any scripture that is in line with when you give, there are certain returns, certain principles that are activated. However, um, the truth of the matter is, um, you know, when people are desperate, and, and that cuts across not just the members, but even the pastors, because they too are people. Uh, when people are desperate, they will do desperate things. Now, part of what happens is um, people begin... Um, you know, flouting the process, not wanting to go the full way. They want now shortcuts. For example, the whole issue of give and then quickly, there are quick, uh, you know, m miracles and results. I mean, that's, 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 that's uh, what do you call it? Uh, when you don't want to go the long way, shortcuts. Mm -hmm. So are it's, we saying there are no really miracles in this town? Yeah. Just, just let me land on this. Mm -hmm. It's a shortcut mm -hmm. and that you find many people are being pushed into because they don't want to go the full distance. Just to interrupt you a bit, we have a phone call. Hello, good morning. Okay, okay. Hello. Hello. Yes, please tell us your question or comment and your name. Yeah. Can I can I say what I want to say? Yes. yes, please go ahead. I wanted to ask you, those who are there. Yeah? Yes. yes, we can hear you. Well, uh, uh, you are a, a bishop uh, by training or by that calling, which that guy is calling, a calling, even to bishops, they are, it is a calling. Even to calling men, it is a calling. But I believe uh, a pastor or a bishop is a bishop by training, not by an element. Okay. Thank, yeah. thank you very much, Kenyanjuri. You it want to... Not Sorry, sorry, I think we right. lost him. Okay, then, what do you think about what he said before we continue with what you were saying earlier? 
um, well, basically, I think it's just the perspective with which he chooses to look at it from. Mm. Yeah. Because but but is, is, is it the way it should be? You're trained to be a bishop. Necessarily, yeah. yes, you're called. Like, mm. for example, in the Catholic Church, you, you start from the very basic as mm. a priest. Mm. Then you rise up the ranks. The because order. it comes with different responsibilities. So yeah. does it mean because I was already called in the beginning to be a priest, mm. now for me to be a bishop is anointing or it calls for training? I think actually there is validity in this question. The, the order is first you are called. Mm. After you are called, you now go for training. Mm. Or you oh, you're not it's... called again. You're not anointed again. After, after you are called, mm. you go for the training. You, see, you, you know what calling does? What, what calling does is... Um, it makes you it makes you like a fish in the water that's 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 your area where you are naturally everyone everyone on earth not just the pastors is naturally gifted to flow in certain spheres mm. uh, the the fish was made for water the lion was made for the jungle birds were made for the skies so that's what calling does it shows you your your areas where you can flow with with proper grace with everything you need now after that you will still need training because that's like talent, but you now need training to develop your talent to skill. Mm -hmm. Yes. Then is it right, say you're preaching on uh, television, then you ask people, you put in, what is scrolling the most is the M-Pesa number and actually mm. not probably the encouraging messages that people are sharing. Should that be banned? Honestly, I think it's in, half the screen is green, M-Pesa yes. to this pay bill number. Mm. Because that's this is where I'm coming <laughs> from. Even when Jesus was calling his disciples, he called them from nothing. They were fishermen. Mm. And they left everything behind, including their families. These days we, are so, we see the kind of church leaders who are so much out there looking out for their families, ensuring that they have the kind of life yeah. that they think God has called them to have. And of course, um, the scripture says that he wants to give us a future filled with hope and mm. prosperity, which is true. Mm. But is it at the expense of the people that you're speaking to? Do we run a risk of losing that connection because you're so up here and the person you're trying to minister to is so down there, mm. there is no connection. Mm -hmm. Actually, on, on the point that I was in uh, earlier, um, that's, what I, that's where I was going in the sense that um, instead of shortcuts, the role of pastors, part of their role should be to teach the believers principles. You see, uh, for example, in our church community, and of course, we've had people who've been through different churches and maybe who came also with that seed mentality or how much should I give for this. Uh, we usually tell them, you know, whenever you hear all these declarations, eh, you will prosper, give this. We tell them the intelligent question should be how. Yeah. Ask how. how. How does putting money on a stage translate into me becoming successful in life all round? Mm -hmm. And you see, the issue is, again, because the emphasis has moved from teaching principles, deal with the people's paradigm, their ways of thinking. Mm -hmm. you, I mean, okay, now here we are at a studio. Now, do you give money for you to become successful in what you do? <laughs> you give time which uh, can be that's, equal to that's money. It. Yes. And in that time, an in that time mm -hmm. you've been taught principles mm -hmm. for your career, for your profession. Mm -hmm. You've been taught, you know, there's a lot of information, understanding that you work with to develop now and become skillful in what you do. So in the same way, the pastor's role is not to motivate people to give. Give to my ministry, the number on your screen, if your name starts with M. Mm -hmm. All that is, is, is just off. Mm -hmm. The role of the pastor should be teach the people. Give them, it's, it's the whole thing of don't give them the fish. Teach them how. To fish. The pastor didn't get there by getting money. Mm -hmm. He got there if he's right, rightly there. He got there by properly understanding and utilizing principles. Mm -hmm. So there are three things we talk about. One, teach principles that will affect the level of thinking of the people, their paradigm. Mm -hmm. Get them to think right. You don't become a CEO, I mean, just by wishing or just by miracles. There's due process, there's due diligence. The paradigm that you teach them to be able to acquire and walk in later on begins to, de uh, to develop into a lifestyle. Mm 
a culture. Mm -hmm. So they develop a culture of hard work, a culture of diligence, a culture of disciplined spending, a culture where they know, you know, informed by proper value systems, beliefs. Mm -hmm. It makes them to become credible people in society. Mm -hmm. And lastly, once you have a proper paradigm, uh, building a proper lifestyle, you end up having a proper civilization, mm -hmm. which is what people are looking for. I want, I want a lifestyle that makes me, you know, uh, feel comfortable in life. At the same time, it empowers other people in society. But it is built. It's not wished. And in as much as I believe in miracles, not the shortcut miracles. There mm -hmm. must be They process. saw in giving. Do you yes. believe? Yes. But before you respond to that, okay. that's what yeah. we'll come back with. We're taking a short break. This is a social hour. Do stay with K24. Right, welcome back to a discussion today. We're talking about the church and uh, how the church drifted away from the actual virtue that they're supposed to preach. And actually, you know, is what, what does it mean when they say sow a seed? What has what, what is the church going into in this day and age? And of course, uh, we have our guest, Pastor Mark and Pastor Kibuga. Yes. <laughs> Before right, the oh, break, then, uh, sorry, sorry, let me to cut you short. Mm -hmm. It's just I didn't want them to, to forget. Mm -hmm. I, oh, sorry, we've got a call. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Mm -hmm. Hello. Hello, how are you? Very well. Tell us your name, where you're calling us from, with your question or comment. Okay, my name is Faisal. I'm calling from Malindi. Yes. Yes, and I have been watching your program, and I think uh, the biggest problem they are having. Mm -hmm. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. The biggest problem we are having in today's world is that we are having man-made religion. All right. Would you kindly turn yes. down the volume of your TV so we can hear you properly? Okay, yes. Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, turn down the volume of your television set. I am even outside. I'm not even near the television, madam. All right. Okay, you're yes. saying? So what I'm saying, mm -hmm. uh, the biggest problem you are having right now is yes. man-made religion, yeah? Mm-hmm. Whereby people are preaching according to their mind, not according to the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. And people are taking advantage because, in fact, remember what uh, that person is saying that uh, we go for training. Who is training them? Is this man or the spirit? The spirit of God. If, because if it's, the spirit, if it's the spirit of God, then they will preach according to the spirit of God. But if they are trained by men in those theology schools, then they come and practice what is being what is being taught there, and that is man-made religion. Mm -hmm. yeah? So whatever they are preaching, they can selling water, selling anointing oil, and all that is man-made religion, taking advantage of the poor people. And if you listen to those preachers, they never even tell people about the kingdom of God, they're about the salvation, they only tell people about miracles. When will people be told about about the preaching, about the kingdom of God that is coming? When will people be told about the salvation? They are only told about basic miracles, which are just physical. People don't need physical religion. They need spiritual religion, mm -hmm. which a religion which will save your soul, but not your body. Because even if I get healed today and tomorrow I die, I go, I, I go to, to hell, it will not benefit me. Mm -hmm. It doesn't benefit me at all. So what people need in this world is people can just go back to the earth, to the original plan of God. It was to save the soul and of human, not the body. And that is why if you see those people, they are just living lavish life. They are just living... Um, yeah, it's whom the whole the Bible says. The, the Bible says, What you and that is exactly what is happening right now. Those people who are supposed to bring the to, to preach the the gospel of God, they are bringing Isaac in the altar of God. All right, thank you very so much, Isaac. Thank you so much, Isaac. Isaac there is actually very displeased by those people who take the name of God in vain. And uh, he says that there's those pastors who actually sell anointed oil and depending on how big your bottle is, the bigger the blessing. Mm. Is that true? Um, it's, it's, it, those are extra biblical um, gimmicks. There's nothing like that in the Bible uh, where you sell things in order to minister to people. Um, there's a lot of greed that has come into the church because people abuse power. Um, Jesus called us to serve the people and bring transformation to the earth through his values. Mm. 
Um, let me give you an example. I used to be part of a church where the pastor preached. Well, I wasn't part of that church, but I visited a few times. The pastor preached that um, uh, Daniel was a seed uh, in the lion's den. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That um, the, the, the lions did not eat Daniel because they knew there was a harvest coming. Mm -hmm. So they deliberately shut their mouths so that they gave Daniel as a seed alive and they got a harvest. Many more people <laughs> were given to them. And I mean, I, I wasn't, I was a very young believer at the time. I didn't know much, but I knew there was something wrong with that. So personally, I think that, how did I get delivered from that? I searched scriptures for myself. I still maintain that many people who are in the church need to know what's in the scriptures and, and be set free from many people who are misusing uh, or abusing power mm -hmm. that God has vested. Many of those people are actually called by God, but they veer off the path of righteousness. But and, I don't um, understand what, why someone would sell anointing oil. And depending on how big your bottle is, that's how big your anointing will be. Mm -hmm. You know, in the sense that you, you said, okay, fine, many people are called to serve God. But then the factor is you find it's more easier communicating with God directly than it is to go to your local pastor. Mm -hmm. Because by the time you get past his entourage of security and just say, Pastor, please pray for me, you will have taken so much time because, you know, like, yeah, book an appointment. Book, you know, this is someone you're supposed to just go to. This is a man of God. I'm not saying that they're not supposed to be secure, but they, they're like celebrities of some sorts in the gospel arena. Mm -hmm. You know, like, they're fighting the big wig battle. So that, like, like you said earlier in the conversation, if I'm down here, like what Resian said, it's so hard for me to communicate with my pastor because, first of all, it doesn't even look like you understand where I'm coming from. So what exactly leads these pastors to move away from what they were, like the actual calling that it's supposed to be to some celebrity status, you know, and some of them have enough candles from here to Moscow? First of all, I think it's nice to also clarify mm. that um, pastors are not supposed to be poor. It's true, okay? but they're uh, abusing, they're yes. abusing the Yes, they are the excesses. Of... People take things to extremes. Mm -hmm. But it's good to clarify that the fact that I'm called to be a pastor does mm -hmm. not mean... Uh, I have holes in my shoes. I can't dress properly. My mm -hmm. kids have to mm -hmm. go to, you know, schools where mm -hmm. we're barely scrapping by. No, I think there's a balance to all of this. Sometimes um, people swing to that extreme in order to deal with an inner deficiency. Mm -hmm. They struggle with issues out there. Some actually come into the ministry because, okay, it's a means for survival for mm -hmm. some, mm -hmm. for some. Um, and then when they begin to have access to people, access to resources, the focus turns to them. I was just thinking about it on my way here, um, that when God calls you, he actually doesn't call you for you. He calls you for people mm -hmm. because God's interest is to set people free mm -hmm. and reconcile them back to himself. And like he said, transform them progressively through the teaching of principles that shift people's minds from being dependent uh, to becoming, like it says in Ephesians, work with your hands mm. so that you would have to give to those in need. Sometimes I think those scriptures are often... And, not okay, just to add that, I know, yes. just, just a second before I lose my, you know, my train of thought, mm. any career has its own rat race, right? And for example, you know, uh, uh, basically you understand the past struggles, you want to get the top and stuff like that. So when I become a pastor and uh, my, my goal is very honest, I just want to really preach to people and everything like that. So when I go within the ministry and I find that this past is more uh, in successful than I am or A, B, C, D, and I want to climb up the, you know, the ladder. Mm -hmm. So what happens to my mind in the sense that um, I have to do all this power stuff? You understand? That means I'll be very deceptive in my own ways. That means I'm an en enemy of myself. Actually, not, not really. Firstly, the rat race principle is not accurate. Uh, there are so many, I mean, which, which day did you ever hear about birds colliding in the sky? <laughs> but, you know, there wasn't enough space for any of them to make it. I have to enter your lane. The truth is, we were all made to shine. Mm. And there is already, I mean, they talk about it today in economics, and they say there is already enough wealth on the planet to make everyone, all the seven point something billion of us, millionaires. But then when it's greed, basically, when a few people now begin to mm -hmm. hoard, same principle applies here to even the... Um, 
pastors and church leaders as a noble career by itself. When they now get out of line and now they, they all believe I need to make more, I need to be in a bigger place, I need a bigger house, I need this and the other. But if, if I would turn it around and say, would it be a question if... Uh, would it be a question today that we'll be talking about pastors, that should pastors be having this or that if those pastors produce champions from church? Can you imagine if churches today produced uh, politicians, the, the breed of Daniel and Joseph, live what we're saying today, if they produced astute businessmen, if they produced people who are in the field of education, science and technology, who are making breakthrough innovations in technology, if, if they produce sportsmen and women of renown, would the pastors be questioned if they produce those kind of people? No, they will not. But now, are they being questioned because they have failed? And I want to draw back to what uh, Pastor Max said. And I agree that it's not that because you're preaching the gospel of God, your life should be mm -hmm. pathetic. And uh, I think it's in, if not numbers, it's Deuteronomy chapter 5. It talks about um, the Levites, which was like the priestly tribe, and that you should take food to, to the house of God that will take care of them. But when you have the kind of pastor that has not only one car and for say for their birthday or their major celebrations you ask the congregation to contribute to buy you a car that member of a congregation that does not even have food for that evening where is your conscience? and they want to yeah. church maybe yeah such issues i like like we said um they are extremes there are people who go off um because i believe a lot of people are trying to deal with inner deficiencies they, they look for shortcuts they look for opportunities to enrich themselves um, which, which is not biblical, really. Uh, I believe the principle here is that God takes care of people he calls. He has set up systems in the church. He has put structures in place through which resources are made available for the upkeep of people who are involved in ministry. Um, but like not only in church, but in every other profession, you have people who use um, unethical means in order to enrich themselves. It mm -hmm. happens everywhere. Just, mm -hmm. yes. but, all, all right, probably before we go to Jimmy, Pastor okay. Kim, uh, Kibuga, yes. I know you'll want to respond to this. Mm -hmm. And I said a lot of times, these preachers use the same gospel. I think in Luke it says that to those who have more, much will be given, and those who don't even have, even the little that they have will be taken away from them. Is this probably their inspiration? Is that where they try to lie and deceive people again that, of course you see you don't have so yes. even that little that but is that no. what it means actually i don't think that scripture applies to material things no, <laughs> that's not, not, that's not, no other apply. people can actually you know no you, make can, it take, look... you can take any scripture and twist it yeah Absolutely. any any which way yeah however i would say this um reverend mark had said earlier um there's there's a major uh, weight of responsibility that rests on the shoulders of the church. Uh, okay, we'll get just hold on to that. I thought we've got a call. Good morning. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, tell us your name, where you're calling us from, with a question or comment. Okay. This is Reverend Captain Kennedy, a priest from the Anglican Church in Toronto. Yes. Yeah, this is my contribution. Yes. Yeah, so I feel uh, what, what, what the church is lacking. And I want to as an Anglican, yes. it's very critical that people go for training. Mm. Because when you are trained as a priest, you are trained holistically. There are issues, there's, there's a course called moral theology, there's a course called, called biblical literature, there's, there's, there's a, a, course, a course called homiletic. As any other course, teachers go for training, doctors go for training, priests must go for training for them to deliver. Mm -hmm. And then, when you are trained as an African priest, you have to be licensed by the diocese that trains you. Mm -hmm. So there's good, clear regulation mm. as a priest. Right. The mush mushroom in churches where somebody just wakes up and begins to church and calls himself a pastor without training. The Bible is complicated. Mm -hmm. One needs to be trained. Mm -hmm. So when I even look at the debate on the television, I ask myself, why why are we not stressing on training and licensing of priests? Mm -hmm. So that as an Anglican priest is a mess up. Okay. My license is withdrawn. Mm -hmm. Just as the law society of Kenya, a lawyer mess it up, the license is withdrawn. Mm -hmm. Very clear structure. So I wonder when you speak about what you should focus on these mushrooming judges. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Oh. Well in the chat. Okay, thank you very much, yeah. Kennedy. Probably we should rope in Jimmy into this conversation. Jimmy, I, I remember I've asked Pastor Mark and uh, Pastor Ki Buga a question, uh, that there are those people who will say to those that more is given, much will be expected of them. But if you look at, um, uh, at it from a materialistic point of view, look at the parable of the talents. The one that was given more, mm. more was added to them. Mm. So if somebody comes to you with this kind of approach, one was given two, one, five, one, ten, then one decides to hide it, the other one multiplies it by five, the other by ten, and the one who did it by ten was given all these others. So isn't that actually something that, if not taken correctly, can mislead a lot mm. of people? Well, as the two pastors have said, I mean, you can take um, any verse in the Bible, any scripture in the Bible, and, and you can twist it around for your own benefit, if that is your motive. If your motive is to, to further your own selfish gains. Um, but even in that, I mean, if you look at it even, even um, uh, practically, for example, if, 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 if you're a lot more talented, Rassian, uh, in terms of what you do here, you can, you can, you can, you can uh, um, read the news, you can do interviews, you can edit, you can produce, you can direct, and the management found out that you were this you know, multi-talented person who's been kept somewhere very close, they'll move you somewhere else because you, know, you can do a lot more. Mm -hmm. But if you had all these talents, you will just end up being that uh, news caster that, you know, that you only want people to know about. It's, Kind of practical, so I don't know, but you find people twist it, um, uh, you know, and, and use it for their own benefits. I mean, I've you know, I've, by the way, limited you, Restian and Remy. Once upon a time, I was also in the ministry, and the things I saw in terms of what you guys are saying, in terms of uh, um, how people twist and use their own congregations for their own selfish gains, and they use scripture, you know, and and uh, and as Pastor Kolo um, um, uh, has said. If you do not understand scripture, it is so easy to throw you off. So is whatever somebody tells you, you will believe because you don't understand it, you don't know it, you don't seek to understand what scripture means. And I like what the caller said, perhaps also, and I'd like to know what the, the reaction of the pastors would be, perhaps what we need to do in terms of, uh, to end this mushrooming churches coming up, we should have a strict regime in terms of how, you know, um, like doctors go for training, presenters go for training, even, I guess, the people of the flock should go for training as well and be licensed. Uh, you know, to, to open their own churches rather than just somebody who thinks can be a teacher um, comes up and starts a church, next thing you know things are a little twisted anyway, let's see what people are saying Mwangi from Nakoro, the counterfeit preachers are doing counterfeit preaching that's interesting they do this for their own good anointed pastors teach the gospel of seed time and harvest time for the good of members for the word of God is life, amen Maurice Otieno. Yes, it has now turned to be a gospel limited company. <laughs> and its main purpose is for profit making. Okay. Um, we said the government should make laws to control these fake churches and punish those pastors taking advantage of innocent Kenyans. No, that takes too many laws. James Stokey, the congregation ain't taking their work with Christ so seriously. That's why people are misled. Okay. Kinoti. True and well said, Pastor Mark. Yes, break it down. It's not just reading. It's my responsibility to search the word of God. Two. Yeah, if you think knowledge is expensive, try ignorance. Such Charles, case of few rotten apples contaminating the fruit basket. True. One in a million. The people have turned the house of God into business ground and also into a farm where they are planting seeds. Very true. Washida, just some greedy Kenyans posing as pastors. It's business mainstream churches are still okay. True. Yeah, <laughs> all those who use the Lord's name in vain will not accept the, ex escape the wrath of God. Okay, the church is the light of the nation. It has lost lost its light because they haven't seek the Holy Spirit, the great teacher. Okay, and lastly, James Rudd. or Root. Don't know. Maybe there's a kind of O missing. The true gospel is a gospel of repentance and seeking God for heaven, the kingdom. Even if you acquire the whole world, you will never live here with anything. See God first, and the rest will be added unto you. Jimmy, just before you, you mm. know, leave the wall, mm. um, there's this aspect also. Live alone, just pastors. We're talking about gospel artists, yeah? You can find some people uh, would complain that, uh, you know, they're just new converts, they've gone to church, and then, you know, they, they follow, they admire this artist, and they try and follow their ways and stuff, and then all of a sudden, they just hear one day, this guy has been caught doing ABC, the opposite of what exactly they're doing. So what also happened to the influence that they also create? Is it that um, they become so overwhelmed yeah. with that kind of a status? Like in your time in ministry, I'm sure you've seen a lot, like you said, 
so when it comes to the gospel art and someone has come to church and you're like, but this guy was supposed to be like this and imagine <laughs> I saw him doing ABCD. <laughs> yeah, I remember because we, we were struggling. One time, one of one of actually our main uh, uh, pastor was, was seen in a popular uh, pub having a glass of wine. To us, that was that was shocking. But it was a glass of wine. <laughs> and he actually used the scripture to defend, you know, he was somewhere, it was, there was a traffic jam and he walked into uh, a popular bar, and I say popular bar, I means one that, you know, you wouldn't quite find a pastor in there. But he went in there and had a glass of wine. Was that right or wrong? But you see, what, what happens is, even for gospel artists, you need to understand the industry you're, that you're into. You need to understand what, you know, what forms or what, what guides the moral aspect. Um, what defines you as a gospel artist? What is expected of you? And you can't say that, you know, there's some aspects of the, of the gospel life that you will live and there are others. Apana, you know, even me, I'm a, I had somebody saying, I'm not a gospel artist. I'm a, I'm a what do you call it? Conscious. It, 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 you can't be. Yeah. If you say that you're going to stand up there and sing about the works of Christ, that is what, and, and, it, the, the, and there are responsibilities that come with that. You can't be half-half. It can never be that way. You can't you can have things the way you want. And there is some aspect of it, okay, here, yeah, because here I know my fans. Uh, uh, there's, of course, the gospel market is bigger than secular. Anyone can tell you that. Um, so in that aspect, because it brings me money, I'm confined. But in terms of my own personal stuff, that can be detrimental to uh, an innocent Christian uh, passing by. You know, that's, is your problem? No, it can't be that way. If you conform, you conform. If that's who you want to become, you must become that person. It's as simple as that. No two ways about it. Yeah, now, let me, let me ask uh, this question to the pastors. Jesus told not just the disciples, but uh, also the people who wanted to follow him, that there were three conditions. First, you deny yourself. You pick up your cross and you follow me. But what we're seeing now is we want it there. Or people who want to be on the forefront or people who want to propagate the message of Christ want it the easy way. Because, yes, they sh it does not mean it should be uh, difficult from January to December because you're the man of God. But that, that is a route that we do not want to take. We do not want to deny ourselves. We do not want to pick up our crosses and follow him. We want to make it easier. Like Jimmy says, we want the best of both worlds. First of all, I think um, that particular scripture uh, has, has not been understood uh, by a large portion of the church. Uh, there's very little connection in that scripture to material issues. It's a lot bigger. It's a true. lot bigger than very that. Very true, I agree. Um, and and if, we can, if the emphasis of the church shifts back to making disciples, not just gathering converts or congregants. Mm -hmm. I think that's where the greatest need is right now in the church. Jesus never sent us to have large buildings where people gather every Sunday and are entertained. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He called people to make disciples. And those disciples become disciple makers themselves who transform the world. Um, so that scripture applies holistically to the issue of if anyone wants to be a disciple of Jesus, not just if you want to say, uh, I'm born again, mm -hmm. I love the Lord, mm -hmm. I'm going mm -hmm. to heaven. No, it's about being a disciple of Jesus. And a disciple is simply one who patterns his life mm -hmm. after the master. Because for, for me, that means yes. that it means it will not be easy, number one, because uh, at what extent would you go to deny yourself and was, then to pick up your It course? was never meant and to of be course, easy. Yes, exactly. Jesus never, exactly. Jesus that's, never, that's my point. Yes. So people want to make it easy to be followers of Christ. It should not be easy. Well, Then it's a choice you make to be or not to be. It's not like we're forced to be on the forefront. I, 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 I don't you know see, what you're saying. That's, that, that's why the whole issue, and we've had uh, not only the last caller, but uh, other callers and also others who uh, wrote, sent their sentiments, emphasize the whole issue of training. Because, again, uh, if the majority out there, why, why would they want shortcuts? Because they want it easy. Mm -hmm. But it was never meant mm -hmm. to be easy. Success is, 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 is not an easy road. Mm -hmm. However, it goes back to the issue of training. In fact, the thought that I wanted to say just before we went into the comments was the fact that I think, again, the responsibility in as much as the leaders, uh, church leaders, need their own forums for training, and there are, there are forums for training. Um, in as much as they need, the saints also, the, the believers also need to be accountable for their own life, their own destiny. Yeah. Uh, I think someone has said common sense is not so common these mm -hmm. days. Mm -hmm. And that's why you'd find people mm -hmm. being so gullible and falling for the same tricks over and over again. This is a question that I would pose to all uh, Christians who are watching. 
next time you know you are watching any of these things on TV or you're in a church and they are asking you for any of those uh, gimmicks for quick success, yeah. um, if the church that you are in or the congregation that you are part of is not empowering you as a believer, mm. empowering you socially, empowering you economically, mm -hmm. empowering you professionally, empowering you maritally, you know, relationally, mm -hmm. if it's not empowering you, then you have many valid and legitimate questions mm. to ask the man or the woman of God there. Mm. Like I said before, if church consisted of champions, people who are raised from nothing to something, people who are empowered socially, morally, economically, spiritually, and they became leaders, captains of industry, this question would not arise. That is not, again, to justify excesses. Excesses are wrong. Mm. But then, you see, the, the issue is because the focus has moved. If the church spent time empowering those believers, instead of milking the sheep and clearing them, invest in them, mm. empower those people, make a little one to become a giant. I mean, if it focused on that, mm -hmm. this wouldn't be an issue. Let me right. throw some weight behind what you just said. Mm -hmm. Scripture is very clear. Mm -hmm. Fivefold gifts were given primarily for the equipping of the saints. Mm -hmm. That means every saint, every believer, every Christian needs to be equipped mm -hmm. so that that person can be engaged in the work of ministry. It means every believer has a ministry. Mm -hmm. So an assignment, yeah. has an assignment, mm -hmm. has a purpose, a calling from God. Mm -hmm. The role of the pastor, the role of the evangelist, the role of the prophet, the apostle, whoever, is to equip the saints. That's why I said a moment ago, when God calls you, he doesn't call you for you. He calls you for other people. Mm -hmm. Right. And, 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 because, and because, so, so, uh, so stressing the place of training, mm -hmm. I mean, we cannot overemphasize that, mm -hmm. both okay. for those who are called into the fivefold mm -hmm. ministry, as well as every single believer to be trained, to be empowered, mm -hmm. to be transformed, to be Christ-like. Mm -hmm. Okay. Exactly. And because of turmoil, I have two questions. Uh, someone is asking first, uh, why is it that um, we, we find that uh, the mainstream churches won't have as diligent followers as the small churches in the sense of the, the ones which have, you know, the, the jumpy like the, you know what I mean? They the, actually do the, 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 well, well, in the sense that, um, mm -hmm. fine, they have their followers, but the difference with the way these other smaller churches have, their followers are more into it, they understand, they are basically one with the church. Not, we're just saying the ratio is quite different in regards to their faith and their response. And then the second thing is, <laughs> A uh, 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 viewer is saying that why is it that pastors uh, have all these titles, um, doctor, doctor CG, nanny, professor, you know, and all these <laughs> things attached to them? Uh, basically, so we can answer those two questions. Uh, Mark, Eric. Okay. Um, maybe let me, let me start with the second one. Uh, <laughs> the, the whole issue of titles and mm -hmm. all that. Um, pastors are having those titles and they're becoming questionable because, again, <laughs> Reverend Sorry to repeat Bishop the Doctor. point, but I keep, I keep uh, <laughs> emphasizing the same thing. Simply because they've forgotten what the assignment is. Mm -hmm. If they focused on empowering the people, you wouldn't matter the title. Mm -hmm. Of mm -hmm. course, again, all checks and balances observed uh, so that we stay sane. Clearly, yeah. But at the same time, if they focus on their primary mission, look, if, if, if I was your coach, I give an example. And I got you from maybe when just out of high school, still confused where to go in life and all that. And I gave you, I helped you understand and articulate your purpose. Mm -hmm. And I helped you develop a skill mm -hmm. and really fine tune on it. And later on, you went up, uh, went on, became great and all that. You wouldn't matter what I called myself. Mm -hmm. You would know this guy made me great. Mm -hmm. That's what's lacking. Mm -hmm. And that's why all these questions, of course, with the proper checks and balances. I like that. Let, mm -hmm. oh, sorry, you want to say something before no, I just, ask my just final question? No, just to echo question. that. The yeah. issue of titles um, has also been abused, largely, uh, because some people get their self-worth and sense of importance by the titles affixed to their names. Um, you read the Bible, I don't see Paul um, calling himself Apostle Paul. <laughs> he would always introduce himself, Paul, the Apostle. Mm -hmm. So it's more of a function. Mm -hmm. It's more of a function, yes, not a title. Yes, you have people yes. who call themselves pastors, but they are not pastoring anybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They are not shepherding anybody. Mm -hmm. They are not caring for the flock. Mm -hmm. So you can call yourself what you want. Mm -hmm. God has your number. I, I know time I is, like is out, but just mm -hmm. one final question as we wind up with your final thoughts. I believe there is power in giving. Do you believe there is power in giving? Definitely. It's in the scripture. You mm -hmm. can't take it out. Mm -hmm. Yes. Where do we draw the line? By following Very the scripture. Good. 
-hmm. following the scripture you see you see um again when you look at it and it takes us back to training because uh, a, a trained a trained person will be able to tell wh where you draw the line how far the parameters are because like we mentioned again it's just taking something from scripture and pushing it yeah. to one other extreme yeah. but then training lets you know your boundaries because again uh, i'll give an example as as as, as a pastor uh, who is my employer Yes, I know there may be the organization that I work with or I represent, but ultimately I'm, I'm working for God. And so God draws my boundaries. However, he's communicated my boundaries through, other, uh, through his word and other sound men and women who've been able to, you know, develop, um, you know, uh, be, have been in the ministry for some time and have had a credible, clean track record. Mm -hmm. So from them we can learn. Not everyone out there is bad. Mm. We can learn from them. Uh, these are the principles. These are the checks and balances. And so we're able to keep it straight. All right. Last word? <laughs> yeah, very briefly. My director okay. is telling me that's right. it. I just want to mention that seconds. the fact that there are counterfeit preachers, maybe counterfeit churches out there, I just want to mention that there are genuine preachers. There are people who love God, are serving God. And, and there are quite a number of them, good mm. churches who are following the scriptures, and are raising people for God. Mm -hmm. um, Jesus says, by their fruit, you shall know them. So mm -hmm. it's up to every believer to find out what the scripture is and find out, is this person patterning his life? Is this church being built the way Jesus did his? Mm -hmm. If it's not, why should I remain there? So again, responsibility lies to the saints. All right. Um, yeah. Romy, you want to close the show? Very briefly, because I know my director will kill me. Um, what, he, what Eric said about uh, everyone has pace. You know, so there they should not should be a rat race in the Christian world that you just make your name the way uh, you're supposed to. They shouldn't be like a rat race because if you understand the concept that you have your space and this is your calling, then you'll follow that path exactly. All right. Probably something that I said. Uh, you want to be a follower of Christ, there are three things. You deny yourself, you pick up your cross, and you follow him. That's not necessarily easy. This has been the social hour. Do stay with K24.